Greetings to you. This is Brother James Muhammad, a student in the ministry of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and a very proud member of the Nation of Islam. Coming to you live once again on Closing the Gap. And this show, we are so thankful to Almighty God Allah that it has been extended to us. And as you all know, we always begin our program with expressions of gratitude. For whatever we are of good, whatever we do of good, we do not do it in and of and by ourselves. And whatever we are of good, we certainly are not that in and of and by ourselves. All of us have contributing factors in our lives, some good, some bad. But as the scripture says, God is good all the time and by his permission, people cross our paths and become a part of our lives. So it's all good, as the expression goes. And so we begin in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We thank almighty God, Allah, for his merciful and prophetic intervention in our affairs. In the person of Master Fard Muhammad, the great Mahdi, we thank him for raising up from our midst his messenger, Messiah, and now we know him to be the exalted Christ, the one whom the world has been awaiting and expecting for the past 2,000 years. The man of whom I speak is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and we are so indebted to him and grateful for him and by him for his teaching one and raising one, and guiding one and preparing one to sit in his seat in his absence as the father over the house. We thank Allah and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I refer to him as my personal Redeemer. We want to also thank our dear brother, Daryl Johnson, the CEO of In Touch News, and a very, very helpful, conscious, and aware brother. We thank him and his family for extending to us this great, opportunity to share with you some of the message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as it relates to current events, as it relates to historical events, as it relates to scripture, and as it relates to prophecy. We thank Allah for him, and in their names, I'm so very happy to greet all of you once again, with the greeting words of peace, we say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I don't want to leave out my brother, who is such a valuable assistant here in this program. Not my assistant, but he assists in the broadcasting of this program. Our dear brother Esteban, who's always behind the scenes, working the boards and working the phone, and we thank Allah for him. So, let's begin. There's so much happening. And, of course, we have outlets, uh, news outlets, whether they are electronic or periodical, that keep us abreast, at least of the distillation of current events from a particular perspective, which is, of course, the broader society of America and the world. But I always ask of us that we would pursue other aspects and sources of news. You know, brothers and sisters, and those of you who are listening, we have got to pursue other avenues of information other than the broad and mass media. History reports and history confirms that the so-called fourth estate has always been an extension of the political power 
that is in position at that time. They are supposed to be objective and they are supposed to be neutral, but they never really are. I look at how they push the narratives as they relate, of course, to the president, as they relate, of course, to world events, to national and international events. And I find that there is a bias even in their critique of these agencies, these departments of government. But I want to um, ask all of us if we would consider an alternative source of information. And what is that alternative source that I am recommending? That is the Final Call newspaper. This is a paper published by, by and for black people and people of color. Not to the exclusion of all ethnicities and of all races. However, I state black perspective because black perspective has always been locked out, left out of the mass media. And so we who are responsible to tell our story must at some point have avenues through which we can tell our story. And not only our story, but the story of others, the story of international affairs, the story of national affairs, the story of local affairs. The Final Call newspaper. You see the brothers out on the highways and the byways. As a matter of fact, I was out there myself uh, for the first time in a long time. And uh, what impacted me mostly was the consistency and persistency of our condition as a people it appears to remain the same. But I want to go into some solutions to that problem found in the final call and also in Scripture. The title of this week's final call is God Has Come to Answer Our Cry for Justice. And you have repeated, repeatedly heard me bring to you, our listening audience, some of the points of what the Muslims want, particularly points one, two, three, and four. One, two, and three of what the Muslims want are desires and necessities that all people need, all people pursue. First of which is freedom, the second of which is justice, the third of which is equality. And we as a people, not only black people, but people of color everywhere in America and throughout the world, but particularly in America, we have tried and worked through every avenue of access trying to realize these essentials of life. But history has recorded that according to the political, social, cultural, and economic uh, systems of America and, its, and their framework, we find that we have to consider point number four, which simply, simply states, encapsulizing it, we believe that our people who are descendants from slaves should be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of our own, either on this continent and elsewhere. We believe that the land to which we are referring should be fertile and minerally rich with an outlet to the sea. We believe that because of our suffering here in America, and the contributions to this country, I'm talking about the transatlantic slave trade, and all of what we are responsible for being the foundational builders of here in America, we believe that the powers 
in America, the governmental powers should supply our needs in this separate state or territory for 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Well, at a time when the country, at least on the surface of things, are uh, uh, clamoring about, you know, we should be together, we should seek unity, we should seek um, getting along with everybody. And I agree. But unity does not necessarily mean that we have to be in the same place at the same time. Whenever black people or people of color talk about separate lives or separate areas in which we do commerce and we pursue our education, control our education, control our politics, control our economics, then the broader society goes up in an uproar. And I wonder why that is. You know, 400 years of history has taught us that we will never reach parity economically, socially, politically. No matter what one of us are appointed or elected to any political position, our communities remain the same. Democrats come and Democrats go. Republicans come and Republicans go. But travel the land and see what condition the masses of black people are in. It remains consistently and persistently the same. And since now we have pursued every possible solution to that problem, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has stated, God has come to answer our cry for justice. Let's look at a scriptural foundation and justification for separation. In Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th, 14th, and 15th verses, we read, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. He said unto Abraham, he meaning God, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now let us stop and think about this prophecy to Abraham then called Abram. It's talking about his seed that will sojourn in a land that is not theirs. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the whole earth belongs to the original family of the earth. That is the black people of the earth and the people of color on the earth. They are all original and ab-original. So if we talk about the whole earth belonging to the people of color, black people, then how can we justify our relationship to this particular scripture when it states that the seed of Abraham will be in a land that is not theirs? The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that all 196,940,000 squares square miles of earth belongs to the original family of the earth. It all belongs to us. But he also told us that we have been and lived in and searched in every part of the earth and chosen the best part for ourselves. So in the statement, a land that is not theirs, it is not that this country does not belong to the original people. Yes, it does. 
The Native American family is a member of the original family, and this land belonged to the original family, the Native Americans, until a stranger came in, yes, an immigrant, an illegal immigrant came in, deceived, robbed, pillaged, and murdered, and is now in the seat of ownership of this land called America. Well, we have chosen the best part for ourselves. The honorable, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the best part is at the holy city Mecca. Now, why is that the best part when it's made up of desert? It's not talking necessarily about ge geography. It's talking about the best in the sense of righteous adherence to the law of God, to the word of God, to the will and the way of God. Or Muslim is one by definition who submits his or her will to do the will of God. As we continue on, I want to make the announcement that those of you who'd like to join the discussion, call in, ask a question, make a comment, or even offer a critique, you can join the discussion by dialing in at 813-444-9588. Once again, that's 813-444-9588. And so let us continue. Best in this regard does not mean geographical richness as such. It means the best in obedience. At the time of the writing, Muslims who were in obedience to God were in the best stead according to the will, the way, the law of God. I don't know necessarily if that remains consistent today because the Holy Quran teaches us that corruption has appeared on the land and on the sea on account of what man's hands have wrought. And so therefore, uh, what man's hands have wrought has reached out globally and corrupted that which was once pure, righteous, But know of a surety, Abram, that your seed will be a seed or will be a, in a, a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. Them meaning who? Those who were in possession of that particular land because at that time, in 1555, when our fathers were brutally kidnapped from their native land and people and deposited on the shores of Jamestown, Virginia. It wasn't 1619, it was actually 1555. We were deposited in a land that was not ours. And of course, history records our servitude, our chattel slavery that we had to endure for over 400 years. Well, to put it bluntly, we are the focal people or the focus people of that particular scripture. The black man and woman of America. But here God also states in the 14th verse of that same chapter, chapter 15 of the Genesis, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. It's referring to the people who were in chattel slavery to the broader society here in America. And it continues, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Well, that's who we are. You don't know it. 
and upon hearing it, you may not accept it. But we are the people of that prophecy, not those who have usurped that area of land called Palestine and falsely claimed it for themselves. I know you're going to call us anti-Semitic, but the reality of it is that land does not belong to them. They usurped it through manipulations and deal-making. I would ask all of those of you who are listening to go and research the Balfour Agreement and see how those so-called Jews supplanted the people of that area and now displaced the people of that area and now they have claimed it in an apartheid condition for themselves. I'm not saying this out of hatred. I'm not saying this out of bigotry. And I certainly am not saying it out of anti-Semitism. I am saying it because it is true. God has to come to answer our cry for justice. And so let us now begin reading the message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan found in the latest Final Call newspaper. On page 20, the article begins. Hope everybody's all right. Let's begin. God has come to answer our cry for justice by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Editor's note, the following article contains excerpts from the Sunday, November 29th, 2015 address of the same name delivered by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan live via webcast from Moss Mariam in Chicago, Illinois. This message is now available at store.finalcall.com in its entirety on MP3, DVD, CD formats, or by calling 1-866-602-1230, extension 200. Let's begin. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Brothers and sisters, you are good people, but you have been in the hands of a rebel against God. And any time God's guidance, his law, is not respected by you, and you rebel against his law, you make yourself an enemy of God or a devil. In the Genesis of the Bible, Adam received good instruction. He wasn't like us. We never talked with God personally, but Adam, according to the scriptures, had a direct conversation with God, and then he rebelled. Now, they put the same blame on you, sisters. That's terrible to say that the poor sister Eve got Adam to rebel against God. I don't think you should take that any longer, sisters. That's not your fault. Let me give some understanding to that word of Scripture that many who read the Scripture do not understand. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us that it was in large part symbolic. Adam, particularly that Adam that was in the garden 6,000 years ago that is referred to in the Genesis was not the first human being. This is an inarguable fact. Well, after all, if you read further on in Scripture, you will see that once Cain killed Abel, he was banished out of the garden or away from the garden into the land of Nod, east of Eden, and in that land, he found his wife. Well, that contradicts totally the fact that Adam and Eve were the only people there. Well, how could Cain travel out of Eden, east?
east of Eden to the land of Nod and find his wife. Who produced his wife? When was she produced? How was she produced? She certainly did not come from the loins of Adam. And she didn't come from the womb of Eve. There's a time problem there. Well, we don't have to waste too much time debunking that misunderstanding. Let's continue. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the name Eve represents the evening or the time at which the sun is declining. And at that time, symbolically, darkness came over the mind of Adam because he contemplated disobeying God by eating of a condemned and particular poisonous tree. Well, it's not talking about the fruit. It's not talking about an apple or an orange or some other fruit, some other citrus. But it's talking about symbolically doctrine, a body of knowledge that opened up Adam's eyes to an evil aspect of his own mind and in the darkness of the state of his mind as he contemplated disobeying God, the evening or in the darkness when the wisdom of God, the righteousness of Adam was setting in his mind. He fell victim to a body of knowledge. Now, it says that the serpent beguiled Eve. And the serpent crawled up to Eve and whispered in her ear. Well, come on, brothers and sisters. Do snakes talk today? And if they don't talk today, they certainly didn't talk 6,000 years ago. And we really have to stop. I want to ask you preachers in the, you know, in the churches, doesn't matter what denomination, please stop forwarding that kind of foolishness. Animals don't talk. I'm going to say that again. Snakes and lizards and mice and lions and tigers and bears and dogs and cats. They don't talk. They don't talk now, and they didn't talk 6,000 years ago in the garden. It's all symbolic. The serpent represents the serpentine or serpentine mind of the human being that, and, uh, that contemplates both good and evil. We'll get right back into that when we come back from, uh, from a commercial break. You're listening to Closing the Gap. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some. And get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based project-based and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 
813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at the way. In Touch Radio, where you can listen to a cruising flow of smooth soul and jazz. Today's R&B, a fun touch of hip-hop and gospel. All my music on one station. Giving you a buffet of music, news, and entertainment. We're In Touch Radio. Greetings to you, and we're back on Closing the Gap. This is your host, Brother James Muhammad. And we are reading from the latest Final Call newspaper, the headlining article by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan entitled, God Has Come to Answer Our Cry for Justice. But before we continue reading, I just want to say that as a representative of the Honorable, well, let me say a spokesperson of the word of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I'm studying to be a representative of his. To represent means to represent him again, not just in word, but in actions, in moral conduct, in integrity of character. I have not yet developed to the extent that I can say that I have achieved that. But I can say that I, as a spokesperson of his word, can repeat his message to you. I'm studying, I'm living, I'm learning, and I'm striving to be one day a representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But as such, I must say that the, and I certainly this is, no slight on anyone. We are not advocates, of course, of the eating of pork, or, and we're not advocates of um, smoking cigars or anything else of that nature. And uh, we must say that uh, these commercials have no relationship to this particular show. Now let's begin. Again, Once again, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan states, Now they put the blame on you, sisters. That's terrible to say that the poor sister Eve got Adam to rebel against God. I don't think you should take that any longer, sisters. That's not your fault. But the scriptures teach teaches the serpent started talking to Eve and she became susceptible to his deceitful interpretation of God's instruction. Women are very powerful because even some pillow talk caused Brother Adam to disobey God and the rest is history. The world that we live in is in a world of rebellion. Well, the scripture says, this is the Bible. By one man, not woman, not Eve, but by one man, sin entered into the world, and by sin, death. Therefore, all in Adam die. I want to repeat that. By one man, sin entered into the world, and by sin, death. Therefore, all in Adam die, but all in Christ will be made alive. Well, that does away with that foolish and unjustified blaming of the woman for the sins of the man. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there is no such thing as a no good woman. Every no good woman was made no good by a no good man. Let's continue. God didn't lie to Adam when he said, don't eat of the fruit of this tree because the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Satan comes along and says, oh, he didn't mean it like that. You misunderstood. He meant that your eyes would come open and you would be like him. Who wouldn't want to be like God? 
though the poor boy got tricked. From that point, death has mastered life. The scriptures teaches, as by one man, one man sin entered into the world, and death came also by sin, death has passed to all men. The world that we live in is called scripturally death. And this is our work, brothers and sisters, and those of you who are listening. When you see us on the highways and in the uh, byways with the final call newspaper, the well-dressed brother with the bow tie or straight, tri uh, straight tie, courteous, disciplined, organized, peaceful, offering to you the final call newspaper, they're not paper boys. We are not paper boys as such. We are actually in the work of resurrection, not in the work of a physical resurrection. We believe in resurrection, but not in a physical resurrection of physically dead people. We believe in a mental, spiritual, moral resurrection, and our people in these aspects of life, and in fact, all, mostly all in America and throughout the world, are spiritually, mentally, morally dead. And so we believe in resurrection, and we believe that the resurrection process should begin here in America with the so-called American Negro, the African American, the black man and woman, because we are the deadest of the dead. Our eyes did come open, he continues, before we were blinded to the lower nature of self. But when you rebel against God who says in the scripture, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I am from above while you are from beneath. Well, what happened that his way is not ours? His thoughts are not ours. What happened? Our eyes became open to the lower nature of the human being. And instead of growing up and reflecting God, we grew up in a world where evil has become the order of the day. And so, death has passed to all men. We are not what we could be. We are not what we should be. We are made in America. And I want us to take that into consideration. Certainly, we are responsible for ourselves. We cannot deny that we have great responsibility in the condition and for the condition we're in. Responsibility is not fault. Responsibility is not blame. But because we have pursued a solution to our problem and a change coming from the government of America, coming from the broader society of America, and we have yet to receive it, then we have the great responsibility of changing our own condition. So in the Quran, the book of guidance of the Muslims, it reads, Allah God does not change the condition of a people until they themselves first change their condition. And it simply means we're not going to change our condition or have our condition changed until we take the reins of responsibility and do that for ourselves. Let's continue. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan writes, you know, when I was coming up, anything that was made in America was supposed to do be better. You're right. A better devil. A better wicked one. You learn all the folkways and mores of a wicked society. And we have adopted their method of life, which is a form of death. The Bible teaches, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. So today is called a day of resurrection. We have to be raised from the mental, moral, social, political, educational state of death. A cry from a human is a prayer for deliverance. 
How do you know that people are dead? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan asks. They're not engaged in the business of life. What is the business of life? God gives every creature the desire to do something for itself. Have you ever seen a black bird in a line looking to the white bird to give it something to eat? That's a strange picture, isn't it? But no creature that God created is without the ability to make a home for itself, to guard itself against the enemy of itself. True? But look at you, beautiful black brothers and sisters, look at you. We're sitting around asking the white man to respect us as a man. But we think like little boys. Little boys, you know, they come to daddy. Daddy, can I have? Or mama, can I have? And naturally, mom has the power then to tell you what room you lay. Stay, stay in. What time you get up in the morning. And if you go out, be back by such and such a time. This is a dictatorship. When you are not a man or a woman enough to run your own affairs, you live under somebody's dictates other than your own. Here we are now, 460 years from the time that our fathers set the soles of their feet in North America, and our cry is, today, justice. We want justice. We want fair dealing. And what answer are we getting? Consider when a baby cries and in November in Compton, California, they found one buried under some asphalt. It was just a few hours old, but somebody heard a cry. I mean, the way God has created life, a baby, whether two years old or two months old, can cry in a way that the voice is pitched against the sounding chamber, the area between your nose and mouth. And if the voice is pitched in the right way, it can produce a bellowing sound. Ah, but the baby, just two days old, was crying. Somebody heard the cry and dug the asphalt away and found a child alive. And the news said... The child is all right. There has to be a God somewhere. Now, my question is, how long have we cried? Our fathers cried on the ship that brought them here to be delivered. And some jumped in the sea to open to the open mouths of sharks rather than to be made a slave. Others suffered three months in the holes of ships, chained, urinating, defecating, and living in their filth. Many died, and others, the strongest, made it to the shores of America. The Middle Passage was like a sifter. It sifted out the weaker ones. But brothers and sisters, we were fortunate because our fathers made it, and from them we came. You are so much stronger than you give yourselves credit for being because our fathers endured much. The cry seemed to go unanswered. A cry from a human is a prayer for deliverance. A cry from a baby could mean, could you change my diaper, please? I have gas, would you burp me, please? My diaper is full of something and my skin is irritated. Would you put salve on it, please? However, babies can't talk, but a wise mother knows exactly what the sound is. There was a woman strange from birth. In fact, people like her are always considered very strange. We have some like that among us. They're really geniuses, but we are not equipped to handle people with high, high intelligence and vision. This was a white lady. She knew whales. Whenever the whale made a sound, she knew what the sound meant. She knew when the whale was crying. She knew when the whale had a need, wasn't feeling well. She studied the whale to the point where every sound that the whale made, she understood it. And she wrote a book concerning it that is like a guidebook 
to those who deal with whales. Our cry has been heard our cry has been heard not for a day, not for a week, not for a year, but for centuries. And it appeared that nobody heard our cry. The universal law of justice that makes demand on every form of savagery. You know, the horrible way that our fathers and mothers died in slavery, we knew the whip and the lash, and we knew the horror of the brutality of our former slave masters. I heard a program on CNN one morning where they were talking about the absolute savagery of this group called the ISIS, how they tortured people, how they cut off the heads of people, lower people into a cage, into a fire, and burned them alive. People are saying, oh, my God, this is savagery. This is savagery. And if I were in the studio, I would show them a picture of black folk hanging. I would show them a picture of white folk standing around like it was a picnic. I would show them black bodies burned, and I would show them white people taking off their heads or taking off the heads of our slave ancestors. Was that savagery? So if the killers of the Western man are savage, where did they learn it from? Now, I'm not apologizing for that behavior, but I want to give you context. You see, pardon me, you're very tender hearted. You're such a beautiful people. I mean, even when you kill, you just get tired. White folks don't get tired of killing. There were 112 million to 120 million indigenous people here called Indians when the white folk came. But when Master Fahd Muhammad came to North America in 1930, there were only 2 million Indians left. Somebody did some killing. Was that savagery? Go into the Caribbean, where some of our parents are from, or some of us are from. There used to be Indians in all, all in the Caribbean. See if you can find them today. Rivers of blood flowed in some of the I islands when the Europeans wanted to slaughter the indigenous people. Was that a form of savagery? I read once that in the Congo, Leopold from Belgium took a young black girl. She may have been 11 or 12. He wanted to show his strength, so he took his sword and struck her in the head and split her body in half. I didn't write that book, but I read it. You know, sometimes when I read some of the history of our sojourn here in America and throughout the Caribbean under the cruel hand of the slave master and the slave maker. It gives me pause to think, to reflect, and to remember. Many of those who might be listening to this particular broadcast may say, why is the brother going back into that painful history? The people today are not responsible for what went on 150 years or 200 years or 300 years or 400 years ago. So why is he constantly referencing that painful history? Yes, it is painful to listen to, is it? and had some activity or some act of repair been engaged in to repair the damage that that era produced in black people, then I wouldn't necessarily have to be talking about it 460 years later. 
There would be no need for an article bringing us back to that history and reading it and reliving some of us the painful, brutal history of our forefathers. But have the people or the descendants of the people who are responsible for such act, have they done anything to repair the damage that those brutal acts inflicted on the people? Are black people still second class and third class citizens? Are the people of color in this world still third class, second class citizens, so-called citizens of America? I'll let you answer that. Look at your condition. Even those of you who made it, who in reality are one or two weeks or two paychecks away from poverty. Has the condition been changed? Has the condition improved? Has the condition been repaired? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan continues. I want to ask you a question. The law of justice makes a demand on every action. And as Jesus said to his disciples, God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, the same shall he also reap. Obadiah the prophet said, Pay close attention to these words, as thou hast done. Past perfect tense. Talking about an action that somebody engaged in in the past. Now watch the change of tense. So shall it be done unto you. There is a law working here that is universal in its application. It has no color, no race, no gender. It's God's law. You can sow wheat. You can't sow wheat, rather, and get back potatoes. You'll get back what you put out. The problem with this is what they did to us was in the past that is continuing in the present. See, they have not changed. Times have, they haven't. So, what they did to us in the past, is there a price that the present generation may have to pay for what was done in the past? You may say, Oh my God, no, these people didn't do it. White folk will tell you quick, we didn't do nothing to your people. We didn't have y'all in slavery, nigga. Yeah, they do say that. They would be telling the truth. They weren't a part of that, but they are the beneficiaries. You know, it's like some of the young brothers that steal a lot. They can't help it because they have no job. They have no means of making a dollar. So they say, whatever I can get my hand on, I'll steal it. Go in and, in the barber shop and sell it. And you are sitting in the chair getting your hair cut, not thinking that you need a flat screen TV. And a brother will walk in off the street and say, I got something for you. And you don't say this ain't Walmart's. I know this is not legal. Then he'll tell you what the price is and you forget about the law. I'll take that. You don't consider that you're receiving stolen goods. Is there a penalty for that? Yes, there is. Now they stole us. We didn't come here willingly. We were kidnapped and taken on a westerly course. I'm going someplace with this point. You say, well, slave making was part of it. Slave taking was a part of it. Slave, and when you made a slave, you did something to that human being that they would purposely or perpetually be in a state of servitude. I'm going to stop right here in my reading. God willing, we will continue it tomorrow. I'm not tomorrow, but next Saturday, same time, same place. I'm very happy to take this time to read 
to the listening audience the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Final Call newspaper. And for those of you who have been listening, continue to read the paper. If you don't have it, purchase it. And then tomorrow, go out to your meeting of the Nation of Islam. We are having a meeting here right at 5508 North 50th Street, Suite 24, where our brother, the student representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Brother Chad Muhammad, will be de delivering a wonderful, wonderful message. I'm going to be there with guests. Why don't you come out? Once again, that's 5508 North 50th Street, Suite number 24. And for those of you who have been listening to this show and you think it's beneficial and you enjoy hearing the word of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as it is read and distilled to you, the listening and viewing audience, if you like this show, we ask you for your support. You can go to PayPal at the address jkingdom1 at aol.com and demonstrate your support of the show. You can go also to JM7 Region for your cash app donation. That's jkingdom1 at aol.com. You can also go in pay PayPal at region7helper.jm at gmail.com to show your support. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your questions. We appreciate your comments. On Facebook, we appreciate your comments. On YouTube, we're now broadcasting on YouTube. We're streaming live at www.n-touchnews.com and also live on Facebook. And after the show is over, you can find us. Give us about a half hour or so, and you'll find us on YouTube in Closing the Gap at Closing the Gap. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you for your participation and your continued support. Until next time, same time, same station, we'd like to greet you with the greeting words of peace as we came to you. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>